So we are going to talk about what does a matrix represent and why do we care so much about matrices. It's important to recognize that a matrix is not just a bunch of numbers that we threw into a box. Every single number in the matrix has a very specific meaning and it can really help when we're doing computations with matrices to understand exactly what those numbers are saying. Now before we talk about matrices, we need to talk a little bit about vector spaces. So a vector space is really just a set that looks like R to the N, or in general it would look like F to the N if we had some other set like, for example, the rational numbers or the complex numbers. The idea here is that the elements in a vector space are giving us a list of N real numbers. So we could have a vector that looks like 1, 2, 4, negative 6, 0. And this would be a vector that's an element of R5 because it has five different real numbers. We can look at a few specific examples of what a vector space looks like. For example, say we have the 2D plane. So we have the x-axis here and the y-axis here. This is actually a vector space because we can take a look at an arrow that points from the origin to some point out here. Say this point is 3, 2. We can see that the point is described by two real numbers, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. And so really, the xy plane is a vector space. It's the same thing as R2, because all of the points in the xy plane we can describe by their two coordinates. Now in linear algebra, one of the things that we like to study is what happens when we apply different functions to a vector. So in this case we have some vector xy. We could think about a function that takes in these two-dimensional vectors, like we said these are vectors in R2, and then it gives us a new vector in R2. And we like to study what happens when we apply these functions to many different types of vectors in our 2D plane. Now the thing is, there are a lot of different functions that we could choose to take in a vector and spit out a vector. For example, we could have a function that takes in xy and gives us e to the x, e to the y. Or we could have a function that takes in xy and outputs sine of xy, comma, 7. So there are a ton of different choices, infinitely many choices that we could make for these functions, but these two aren't very similar. So there's not really a way to study both of these at the same time and get useful information about both of them. So in order to talk about a lot of different functions while still being able to say things that are useful, we want to restrict the type of function that we're looking at to something a lot more simple. And the way that we do that is by requiring our function to be something called a linear transformation. Now a linear transformation is a function that takes in vectors and spits out vectors, but it has two specific extra conditions. The first condition is that if we take two vectors, u and v, and we apply the function to u plus v, that should be the same thing as taking t of u plus t of v. So in other words, we can either add the vectors and then apply t, or we can apply t to each vector and then add the results, and those are going to be the same. The other condition is that t of c times v is equal to c times t of v. So in this case, c is some constant, like 3 or negative 2.6, and v is our vector. So it's saying if we multiply a constant onto a vector and then apply t, that's the same thing as applying t and then multiplying the constant to the new result. Now it turns out that the functions that satisfy these conditions, those are called linear transformations, there aren't that many of these. This gives us a very specific type of function. So let's think about why these conditions give us so much information about the function t. To do that, suppose I give you the following information. Let's say I tell you that if we apply t to the vector 1, 0, the result that we get is a, c. This is some other 2D vector. And let's say I also tell you that t of 0, 1, 
This is some other vector, b, d. And then I give you a challenge. I say, OK, I've given you these two values for our linear transformation t. Can you tell me what is t of the vector x, y? This time, x and y are any real number we want. These could be any values. And I'm asking you, given just these two inputs, can you tell me what is t of x, y? The answer is yes. So let's see why that's true. First of all, I can write x, y in a very specific way. First of all, I know that I can write this as x, 0, plus 0, y. So I can split up the vector into its two components. But I can also split these up even further because I can write x0 as x times 1, 0. And I can write 0, y as y times 0, 1. So now I've really split up our transformation. And you can see that now we have 1, 0 and 0, 1. But we know t is a linear transformation. So the first thing we can do is say t of u plus v equals t of u plus t of v. We can split these two up into two separate evaluations. So this is going to be equal to t of x times 1, 0 plus t of y times 0, 1. What do we do from here? Well, this is a constant times a vector. And the second condition for a linear transformation is t of c times v. We can pull out the c and just do t of v on the inside. So this is going to be equal to x times t of 1, 0 plus y times t of 0, 1. And now we can actually evaluate these two things, because these are the two pieces of information that I gave at the beginning. t of 1, 0, I said, that's equal to a, c. So this right here is equal to x times a, c. And then the second part, t of 0, 1, that's equal to b, d. So we get y times b, d. And then we can put these together into one big vector, because we're going to have a times x plus b times y. That's going to be our x component. So ax plus by up here. And then for the second component, we're going to have c times x plus d times y. And look at that. That's the answer. All I did is tell you t of 1, 0 and t of 0, 1. But using only that, only that little piece of information about our function, we can tell you the output for any vector x, y, anything we want in our 2D plane. And that's why linear transformations are such a powerful type of function to study. So we just showed that a linear transformation is completely determined by where it sends 1, 0 and 0, 1. So if we were talking to someone else about this linear transformation, all we would need to do to tell them what the function was is to tell them the value ac and the value bd. And then they would be able to figure out everything else. So if we want to write down a linear transformation, really the easiest way to do it is just to list these values. And that's what a matrix is for. A matrix tells us what is the output at 1, 0, and what is the output at 0, 1. So here's how we use a matrix to describe a linear transformation like this. What we do is we open our bracket like this. And then first, we look at t of 1, 0. That's equal to ac. So the first thing we're going to write down is ac as a vector right here. Now we know also t of 0, 1. That's equal to bd. And so we put that right over here as the second column in our matrix. And so if someone looks at this matrix, they immediately know what is the linear transformation you're talking about. Because they can figure out that if you take this matrix, this linear transformation, and you apply it to a vector x, y, this matrix multiplication, this is really talking about applying t of x, y. And we just showed that is equal to ax plus by, cx plus dy. So that's what a matrix is telling us, and that's how we do matrix multiplication. Each of the columns of the matrix is its own vector. It's a separate vector, and it tells us where does 1, 0 go, 
and where does zero one go? So one way that we can think about the numbers in a matrix is as input output pairs. So for example, this number A is telling us when we have an X input, what's the X output that we get? That number is going to be A, just like we saw here. On the other hand, this B is telling us if we have a Y input, what is the X output that we get? Just like we saw over here. So each of these numbers is telling us how does one of the inputs, the input is given by the column, how does that input get mapped to one of the outputs? And the output is described by the row. So that is what a matrix represents. A matrix is always talking about some linear transformation, something that satisfies these two conditions. And so the transformation is completely determined by where it sends 1, 0, and 0, 1. In other words, where it sends the x, y values. And this matrix over here is telling us what does the transformation do to each of the basis vectors. Each column tells us the output that we get for one of the basis vectors. This is the x, and this one is the y. We can also think about this as the column telling us the input coordinate and the row telling us the output coordinate. And using just this information, just where the transformation sends 1, 0, and 0, 1, that's enough to get the value of the transformation at any arbitrary vector x, y, just like this.